language that you can't forget and deny. This is five pounds of fat. This is what five pounds of fat weighs, and this is what five pounds of fat looks like. And in a few months, many of you may have six or eight of these that you're leaving behind permanently because you're not doing anything strange. You're just enjoying a lot of healthy, delicious foods. When patients suffering from heart disease, diabetes, and cancer come to Dr. John McDougall, he gives them a very different prescription. He teaches them a new way to eat. There are some very simple concepts in nutrition. And one very important one is the idea that cholesterol is only present in animal products. There is absolutely no cholesterol at all in any vegetable product. So that gives you a good idea on how to divide your food choices. Animal products are rich foods and should be reserved for special occasions, and vegetable products should be your daily fare. Dr. McDougall's patients ask the same questions that I did. If I eat less meat, will I get enough protein? A very common myth is you can't get enough protein from vegetable foods. That's entirely untrue. And you know, if you look back at the scientific studies done over the last 50 years, they clearly show that for human needs, vegetable proteins are superior. As a matter of fact, I'd challenge any dietitian to try and design me a diet that was protein deficient based around any starch and any vegetables. You can't do it. How much protein do we need each day? About 50 grams is the amount recommended by the U.S. government. But the average person in this country eats 200% of that amount. I think that as far as uh, protein intake in the United States is concerned, uh, we're simply consuming too much, particularly too much animal protein, and we really need to seriously take into consideration the possibility of cutting down on the intake of this nutrient. You know, in our society, people believe that diseases are due to deficiencies. I mean, after all, look at what people are doing. They're, you know, worried about getting enough protein. They're taking handfuls of vitamin pills and mineral pills. I mean, think about it for a minute. How many people do you know who have deficiency diseases? Scurvy, beriberi, pellagra? Any of your friends go to the doctor for a protein deficiency this year? That's not where the problem is. The problem isn't here in terms of deficiency. The problem is over here in terms of excess. Anybody have any friends with problems of excess, like excess calories, excess fat, excess cholesterol. This is where the problem is, not over here. Until you start looking in this direction, you won't have the answer to America's health problems. Because he believes that food is so fundamental to his patient's health, Dr. McDougall takes the time to teach them new ways to cook. I asked the patients what it was like to change their diet. My diet before, if you heard me tell you what my daily diet was, you would just sit there and go, oh, my God, you know, it was mostly fat. Usually my habit was I'd have bacon and eggs in the morning, okay? And while I'm finishing them off, I'm wondering what I'm going to have for lunch. And while I'm eating lunch, I say, I wonder what we're going to have for supper. We're going to have that big steak and all that. And I couldn't understand why. I was always gloggy. Constantly seeing the doctors and having them tell me that uh, I wasn't responding and uh, there was not much hope for my condition. My patients come to the clinic sick because they've been feasting 21 times a week. As a result, they have diseases of kings and queens. When you stop the cause of an illness, then they have a chance to recover. I lost 36 pounds. My cholesterol went down to 152. I feel like a million bucks. And um, I just I feel that there's nothing today that I cannot do. I feel great. And it's, the reason I'm saying that is because all of those symptoms went away. Well, I've lost weight, which is great. And, you know, I used to be a chronic dieter with diet pills and all kinds of the latest, you know, the diet thing to do. And uh, now I can eat just like I've always wanted to eat all my life. And when they learn this very simple message that you get some exercise, you get the proper rest, and you eat the right kinds of foods, I'm just living, Eddie. That's all I can tell you. You can't be any nicer than that. I'm not going to die, period. You feel tightness in your going down your arm? Several years ago, Carl Paris suffered a heart attack. I'll be honest with you, at that point, I just figured I'd die on the operating table. It happens in our country every 32 seconds. The great irony is that in the so-called poor countries, the major diseases that kill us are relatively rare and people in developing countries are beginning to worry that they could become too much like us there is a growing concern that more and more people in the third world are going to the mcdonald's chain because if we look at the diet of young people in my country today 
young children, teenagers, they are beginning to eat more hamburgers as a meal, eating a lot more meat, eating Western-style meals is becoming very popular among the people who can afford it. And this means that eventually the meat which was a garnishing or a small part of a big meal becomes the main course. The same size piece of meat on the plate for one person here would be really cut up into a meal for five people at home.